All right, hello again. We're back with our Arduino student kit designed for young people to learn about coding and electronics. So we last time, in the last video, we opened up the box and kind of took a quick look at some of the things inside. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to make sure you've got the website. Remember, it tells you where the website is on this card. It's studentkit.arduino.cc. So let me bring up that website. So I've already created my account on here, studentkit.arduino.cc. And one of the first things you're going to do is you're going to download this logbook. So I'll click on that, and that brings up this logbook. So I've, I've already printed mine out. It's going to be handy to print it out because different lessons are going to kind of ask you to record things so you can kind of monitor your learning and kind of make sure you understand things and kind of go at it at a gentle, slow pace. So it, it helps to have it printed because you can write on it. You can't write on that website very well. You know, as a, it comes in as a what's called a PDF file, and you can then save it. And, and maybe you could, if you want, just print out the pages that you need each time. But I, I just printed the whole thing out and used like binder clips or something to hold it together. Okay, so let's get back here. So there's two th main things that are really important in this getting started lesson. So it's really called Lesson Zero: Getting Started. Let me click on that. And it's going to bring up, there's a bunch of stuff to read, but I want to highlight for now the important things. There's a part here that talks about all the little components in your kit. Let's, we'll, we'll come back to that. But down here under Project Board, this is actual video that you can watch. I'm not going to run it now. You can watch it on your own. kind of shows you how to take, well, let, me, let me show you my my workbench here, how to mount your little Arduino to this plastic project board along with this thing called a breadboard. So on the plastic board, there's, there's going to be some little little shapes and tabs you're going to break out. Some of those are actually parts you want to save to use later. For example, four of them are actually little feet that stick in holes here. They're stuck in good. but So there's four feet that help this thing set flat on on my table. So you're going to put that together. Now, the way it's going to work, you're going to want to mount the Arduino board first and then the breadboard. reason is this thing sticks down with adhesive and once you stick it down you can't move it very well and they're really close together. So you want to put the board first because it goes where it wants to go with the screws and then you're going to put this to make sure it, it fits. You know, there's actually a little outline that shows you where to put it. It's, it's not critical. And they recommend putting it this way so the top is this way and the, and the letters are across the top of the board over here and then the num numbers go down down this way. One thing I did a little bit different just because the way this mounts with three screws I didn't like it um, because for one thing this corner was kind of flapping in the breeze and there's a button here is your reset button that once in a while you put push that to start your program over again and with nothing supporting that corner you could bend the board a little bit so I, I designed a little frame for mine. I'll show you in, in Tinkercad. I designed this little frame that, that fits in those holes. So the same three holes mount it. But what, what this gives me is a nice flat surface. Because the, the Arduino board by itself has little bumps on the bottom. There's little bits of solder and with a wire stick through. And it could kind of rock on this project board. And what I was afraid of is if, if you tighten two screws across here and if there's a little little bump of solder in the middle you could actually flex the board if you tighten it too tight and it might might damage it so by putting this this little thing I printed this out on my 3d printer and that goes between the two it just helps it sit flat you don't actually have to have that that's the way the kit comes but I'd recommend you don't don't over tighten the screws so there's a little nut on the back and the screw goes through. You probably need a little Phillips screwdriver to kind of hold the, the, the top of the screw. You could probably hold this in your fingers because you don't really want to put it too, too tight. 
that, that's a general lesson in life. You don't want to put tighten screws tighter than they need to be or bad things can happen. All right, so let's go back to our website. So that's the that's the first thing you're going to do is assemble this project board. The second thing that's really important in this, let me scroll down, this talks about the, the board and what's on it. But what I want to show you is this software setup. So what, what you're going to install is some software that, that actually lets you write code on, on your computer that then gets down or uploaded into the Arduino board. So depending on which computer you've got, typically you're going to have a Windows or a Mac. Rather than just click on this, because if you click on it, it's going to replace the page right here. So what I'm going to have you do is right-click on that and say, open this link in a new tab. That way I can, I can quickly get back to where I was. I don't lose my... It's like keeping a bookmark on, on the place where I was. So this talks about how to install. It's not hard. You're going to download a file. And then you, when you run it to install, just let it install everything. The, the drivers and the menu shortcuts and all that stuff. Just, just let, it, let it do that. Now the actual download is on this other page. Let me right click there and say open that in a new tab. This is the, the Arduino page where you actually get these downloads. Whether you're on a an old version of Windows or the newer version of Windows. You're going to click on there to download and, and then run the thing to download and then install. You know, you might want to get a, a parent to help you do that. So by having, once I get it installed, that gives me this little thing on my desktop. So if I double click on that, it, it, it brings up this little starter flash screen. And let me just show you one. It brings up a few windows, so they keep it over here so you can see it. So not get too concerned with what the code is, but basically, just to get started, in the Arduino, there's going to be two important parts of your code. There's the setup, the things that you do once, and then a loop. This thing is meant for, like, sensing the real world, and you wanted to have it sense something, do something, and then go back and do it. So it's, it's meant... So your loop continues forever. So what you're, where you're going to start, you're going to go File, Examples, Basics, and there's this one called Blink. So I'm going to bring that up. I get that other one out of my way. So here's, let's see, here's my, my Blink program. And again, let's not worry too much about what it is, but I just want to show you a general practice, what you're going to do when you have some code here in, in this integrated development environment. You, first off, you can, you can save and open other, it's like a file, you know, like, like a Word document. So there's file, you know, file menu is like let you create a new a new file but once you get a file here where it's called your sketch first thing to do is verify that it's okay and you see this little green bar move what it's doing it's actually checking all the code to make sure you've got all the semicolons in the right place upper lower case right and when it's done if everything is in white you're good to go so this says it uses only two percent of my available storage space and it worked good. But if you get some orange messages here, don't panic. We're going to have to then enter a troubleshooting mode. It'll give you some messages to tell you what's wrong. And, and we'll, we'll talk about that later. How do we troubleshoot? Because you're always going to, if you type in code, you're always going to have errors. Even, even when I copy somebody's code from the internet and paste it in here, they even have mistakes in it to begin with, or maybe I didn't paste in the whole thing, you know, with a last curly bracket or something. You got to get—it's very finicky. You're gonna have to get it exactly right. So expect that you're gonna get compile errors. So once that works good, then you're gonna click this. Okay, well, actually, I've got to do something first. I'm gonna have to plug in my my USB cord. Here's my. Should have shown you this first. When I plug in this USB cord and the light shows that it's on. Yeah, two things I need to show you. In this tools menu, 
there's it tells you what kind of board you've got and then the other one says what port on your computer computer are you using so this port menu doesn't even show up if you don't have something plugged in for me so so you might have to plug the USB cord in before you do these two things. So on a Windows, it says some COM port, like that's a communication port on your computer, has got a check mark. And if it's not the right one, you might have to, depending on your career, you might have to check a different one. On a Macintosh, that says something different, like slash dev slash TTY or something like that. So that's going to say something a little different. And then on the board, it's going to tell you you've got the Arduino Uno. There's many different kinds of, of boards. And from this student kid, is the Arduino Uno, or the, the number one board. And if, if you're not sure, if you click on board, Get Board Info, and this actually reads my little board and tells me I've got an Arduino Uno, and it gives me some unique numbers, the serial number that comes off of it. Okay, so those are two things going to have to be right. Okay, then we got that all right. We verified this code. We've got it plugged in. Then I'm going to click, click this right arrow that says upload. So I'm going to upload this code into this Arduino. And if you notice, these two lights are transmit and receive. We're flashing. And then this code that, that was here on my computer is now uploaded into the Arduino board and what it does if you notice this little light there's a little LED light that's built into the Arduino just for testing things and you see that flashing on and off and what makes it flash on and off if I look in my code here I don't know if it helps to blow this up a little bit notice inside this loop it's, it's doing a thing, something called a digital write to the built-in LED, and it's turning it to the high value. That turns the light on. Then it goes digital write to the built-in LED and turns it to the low value. But in between, so it doesn't do it real, real fast, it's got a delay of 1,000 milliseconds. That's actually one second. So it's like as if you had 1,000 millimeters make one meter, 1,000 milliseconds make one second. So we delay for one second, we turn the light off delay for a second, and then because it's a loop, it goes right back to the beginning. So this goes over and over again, turning the light on and off. And that's that's what it's that's what it's doing now, flashing. So to make sure you know that you've actually done this, let's change this value to something else. Let's say let's let's make it blink faster. What if I put a five there? So we've got five hundred. So that's like a half a second. And for delay, let's let's maybe let's get rid of one zero. Say let's make it 100 milliseconds is like a tenth of a second. And then I'll I'll just upload that code again. It goes through the little sequence of reading it in, and now notice the light is blinking a lot faster. It's barely off for just a tenth of a second. If I did this the other way, what if, what if I what if I make it off for 2,000. So it's going to be on for half a second, off for two seconds. Try that again. So you can play with those numbers just to see that you've got this working. And once the code is uploaded, notice it flashes and then it's off for two seconds. It flashes quick and off for two seconds. So that's your first actual, you've actually edited this code and uploaded to your Arduino. You've covered a lot at that point. You know, we've installed the integrated development environment. You've actually put some a sketch. You know, it's a kind of code. They call it a sketch for the Arduino. Kind of like an artist makes a quick sketch. That's, that's why they call it a sketch, I guess. And then we've made a, made a change to it, uploaded it again. So we've, we've covered a lot. So to shut this off, this is going to just run forever. Let me just unplug this. And that takes the power away from the board. So now it's just sitting there again. That program is actually remains in here. So I don't have to upload it again. As soon as I plug this in, I haven't downloaded another program. I've just powered it up. Notice that the light is flashing the same way as I last programmed it. So even though I unplug it, 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 it 
it keeps that program in its memory. So back to this website of your lesson zero, you you probably want to take some time to kind of scan through what's the Arduino, what's in your what's in your kit. It kind of goes through some of what's the breadboard and what's the, what these called jumper wires, your LED lights. I'm not going to get too bogged down in that yet because we'll be using those little components one at a time and you'll learn about what they are. We've, we've done this. Here's the part talks more about the Arduino Uno board, talks what some of the things are. For now, all you really have to know is this is where we plug in the USB. And the next thing you're going to use is, is there's these things called pins. There's little sockets here where you can push a wire in there and connect it to things on your breadboard to make a little circuit that's now controlled by the microcontroller. So we've done the blink program. That's what they have you do. And then to come down the end here, there's there's a section on electrical safety. I'm not going to go through that all now, but I'd like you to read through that on your own. It's important to understand safety. It, it's not as though things are dangerous here in the Arduino. We're typically working with low voltages. But whenever you're working with electricity, there's always a potential that something goes wrong. Like if the wiring in your house is wrong and your computer shorts out and you get house voltage coming in your USB, I mean, it's potentially possible that something could go wrong and you could get house voltage on the metal parts here. So we're going to talk about safety in, in the next video. So read that on your own and come back. And what we're going to do, if you want to look at this ahead, there's a little quiz. We'll go over this quiz in the next video about safety. It's a good place, good place to start before we get in and actually work with our circuits. Okay, so I think that's all we're going to cover in this video. We'll come back in the next video and talk a little more about safety.